What's up guys, today we're going to be talking about the S23 Ultra. I wanted to do my end of the year a review of this phone. It has been really impressive and honestly one of my favorite phones of this year. I can't necessarily say it's the best phone of the year. I haven't tried, you know, all the major flagship and stuff like that. But I've tried the big three as in, you know, the S23, the Pixel 8 Pro, and then the iPhone 15 Pro Max as well too. And man, this phone has been very impressive. It's the phone that I've always come back to and I think it's just the most feature packed phone uh, for the money. And Samsung actually fixed a lot of things uh, with the S23 Ultra that I did not like with the S22 Ultra. So we'll talk about that a little bit as well too. And we'll talk about this One UI 6 update as well, which I think actually made the phone a lot better. So that's typically you know rare because usually with a major OS update, um, you have like battery issues and glitches and stuff like that, but this was actually a very smooth update I had used the beta all the way up to the final release and I was pretty impressed uh, with performance on here The screen is also another highlight with the s23 ultra even though it's not the brightest display uh, Now you have brighter phones like the pixel 8 pro even the iphone 15 pro max This still has one of the best designs as far as the screen it gives you this really boxy look and I think a lot of people don't like the curved display but I actually think it gives the phone a little bit more of a curve or not a curve but a little bit more of a premium experience and it looks like a little mini TV and it's just a beautiful display to look at um, with these very slim bezels on here so I think uh, this is one of Samsung's best screens it gives you the boxy look slight premium uh, curves on here and it's just an excellent looking display. Dynamic AMOLED, 120 hertz, HDR10+. It gets up to 1,750 nits peak brightness. So using this phone this year, I didn't have any issues using it outdoors. Like I said, there are brighter phones, but this thing does get pretty bright outdoors. And it's a full 1440p display at 6.8 inches, 500 for the PPI. Like I said, one of Samsung's best display. And from what we're seeing with the S24 Ultra leaks is that they're going to make the display completely flat. Which I'm not super excited for, but I know a lot of people say that it's easier to put the screen protectors on, which uh, some of you are going to call me crazy. I never use screen protectors. Uh, but yeah, so I, I get that point, but I still like the curved look. I think it looks a little bit more premium. But this is a beautiful display, guys. Whether you're playing games or watching movies, this is as good as it's going to get. Uh, if you're getting a smartphone, beautiful panel on here. Now, I want to talk about some of the, I guess, complaints that I hear a lot of people uh, with One UI 6. And that is, I guess, the way it looks. A lot of people say it looks cartoonish. And uh, I don't know. It doesn't have that, like, serious look that you would find on, like, a... I don't... I, honestly, I, I think they all kind of look cartoonish. The iPhone, even the Pixel. This has, like, these bright colors. But So I don't know why the Samsung gets that called out. They have, like, a kind of, you know, animated look. Um, but, yeah, so I don't I don't dislike the, the UI on Samsung. And it, what a lot of people don't really realize that Samsung even though this is a heavy UI like you have a lot of applications and stuff like that uh, it's not necessarily bloatware so that's one of the things that I was looking at the comments too oh this had a lot of bloatware yeah it's not stock Android they're trying to give you a, a Samsung experience so when you go into the gallery or the Samsung store you're able to take advantage of an application like uh, good Lock, uh, which is on here which gives you crazy uh, customization that's something that you know you can't do on the pixel or iPhone is get like this crazy amount of customizations and I mean the good lot can be a whole video itself like what I tell you it really gets like you can do some complex um, you know animation not animation but some complex uh, customizations on here even when it comes to uh, just animating the phone how Samsung is able to do it all very seamlessly in one application so you're not downloading thousands of applications to try to get a certain look or feature on your phone. It's very impressive. Like I said, it's a whole video itself, right? Um, but yeah, and then a lot of people, you know, you forget about Samsung desktop support, which I try to mention in my projector videos and stuff like that. Samsung desktop support is seriously impressive, guys. It's really, really nice, especially for people who are probably on the go. You bring a portable monitor, a keyboard. You can turn this into like a little laptop as well, too. It's really impressive for that. So like I said, it's a power user phone as well, too. So it's not just Samsung throwing in bloatware applications. It's the applications actually do have a good amount of depth to them. The browser, they have like their own unique, you know, sort of thing to it.
I also want to touch on gaming performance and just performance in general, again, making that comparison to the S22 Ultra. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip is more efficient, uh, obviously it's a more powerful chip, but you don't have those throttling problems and you don't have the kind of overheating problems. And I think that that stuff is more geared towards people who are, I believe, like more into video games. I'm, I consider myself more of a casual gamer, so the S22 Ultra wasn't really a terrible phone to game on at all. But if you were like playing Genshin Impact or playing games, you know, all day and stuff like that, uh, people were noticing throttling problems and you know frame drops and all that uh, overheating problems. Uh, with this phone, it's really not at, it's really not here at all. Like. Even with the S22 Ultra playing a game like PUBG, I would notice like the back of the phone getting a little bit warmer than I would like. With the S23 Ultra, I mean the phone is barely gets warm uh, for you know PUBG playing at 90 frames. Uh, you know it doesn't get hot or anything like that. So I think this phone does a really good job with heat management and uh, just gaming in general, especially if you're a casual gamer, uh, you're gonna absolutely love the experience on the S23 Ultra. It's very powerful. It can blow anything out of the water. Uh, emulators, whatever I threw at it, it was able to do a fantastic job. This is the um, 512 gigabyte version, the 12 gigs of RAM. Um, but yeah, this thing is just absolutely a beast when it comes to performance. Now I want to touch on the hardware uh, with this phone here. So Samsung did make some improvements. It's still a boxy phone and it's still kind of sharp. It's not the most comfortable phone to hold. Um, but it's a very nice looking phone for the most part. You see you have this matte finish, it's IP68 dust and water resistant. Um, I don't use this stylus as much as I, you know, as much as I should. Um, I typically try to use this if I'm like going to the store and I'll just like write a, like a grocery list down real quick. I know this is good for that, but everything else I don't really use it for. I think this is a, a godsend if you are somebody in a digital artwork. I've seen people on YouTube do like crazy artwork with uh, the S Pen, since it's so it's such low latency, uh, it does a fantastic job uh, with that. And then you have all the you know S Pen features and stuff like that that you can mess with. Um, but yeah, the hardware on here is top notch, beautiful. I think Samsung did a really good job. It is easier to hold. I noticed from the S twenty two Ultra because it has that that more kind of like boxier look to it, so it's easier to like kind of hold, I guess. Uh, but again, still. It's still, you know, sharp. Um, but yeah, it's just beautiful hardware on this phone. Really, really nice looking. Something that I don't see a lot of people mention on the internet is actually how the S22 Ultra have some of the worst speakers uh, in a Samsung flagship. Super flat, just really, just really like bad sounding. Just extremely flat, not powerful at all for such an expensive phone. This phone absolutely fixes that. This phone has amazing sounding speakers. Super clear sounding. So you get such a fuller and just a more crispier sound uh, with these speakers. Even if you cover the bottom speaker, the top speaker just gives a clear, nice sound, good amount of bass. It is really, really nice uh, speakers on here. You also do have the Fingerprint scanner, which has pretty much been unchanged, it's still excellent. Ultrasonic, really fast. Face unlock, still great. I do want to touch on the cameras. So I've always said this. I think Samsung has some of the most well-rounded cameras on any smartphone. Uh, because, so I'll give you an example. Like I think the Pixel still does take the best still images, uh, and I think the iPhone still takes some of the best video on a smartphone. But I think the S23 Ultra just has everything you could really want and it does everything really well so it takes really good stills it does really good video as well too and not only that it has some of the best zoom quality in any phone so I'm talking about taking 10 times 30 times zoom shots um, it is going to be really impressive like I said you can go all the way up to 100 times zoom as well too it's still you know first in class when it comes to zoom shots in my opinion um, but yeah, the camera system on here is excellent. I think especially with the features that Samsung gives you with the expert raw mode and stuff like that, the pro mode, pro video, all that good stuff. Um, it is just a fantastic uh, phone when it comes to taking photos, whether it's you know nighttime photography 
or like I said, video, it's still gonna give you some excellent quality. So that's why I said it's more well-rounded than the Pixel and iPhone in terms of giving the user pretty much everything at a really good quality. That's pretty much the best way I, way I can uh, describe it. Um, it is a 200 megapixel standard, so if you wanna you know, crop in a photos and get a good amount of detail, that is there. And then you have that 10 megapixel periscope telephoto, does 10 times optical. Then a 10 megapixel telephoto that does three times optical with a 12 megapixel ultra wide does shoot in 8K uh, 30 and with a 12 megapixel selfie that shoots in 4K 60. Like I said, this year I've been absolutely blown away by the S23 Ultra's uh, pictures. And like I said, some of the best zoom you're gonna find on any phone. All right, so lastly, the battery life. So this was something that I thought Samsung was always lacking with their flagship phones is having really good battery life. And this year, Samsung, I think, surprised pretty much everybody with the battery performance uh, on this phone. It is excellent, guys. And I mean, it's really, really good. It's a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, 45 watt wire charging. So it just charges pretty decently fast. Um, and then you also have the wireless and reverse wireless charging. But when I say this phone easily can go, you know, two days for me as a lighter user, um, it is just excellent battery life, guys. And also just considering, you know, how powerful the phone is. Standby time has just improved and compared to the S22 Ultra, like I said, it's a it's a night and day experience. That was one of my biggest complaints was having to charge the S22 Ultra. It felt like I had to charge it like more than I should, right? Um, especially if you're doing like gaming and stuff like that, just doing heavier tasks. Like I said, this phone does such a great job with this new chipset and I think, like I said, it took, surprised everybody. Um, so. I see why people are putting this as their phone of the year. It's really impressive. Honestly, it's so impressive that I'm really curious to see how Samsung's gonna actually top this phone uh, with the S24 Ultra because looking at the S24 Ultra, it's looking like the S24 Ultra is not gonna be that big of an upgrade. Um, so yeah, so if you were thinking about buying the uh, S23 Ultra, I would definitely uh, make that move and just buy it now. I wouldn't say because from what I'm seeing, the S24 Ultra is not going to be that big of an upgrade in my opinion. So I would try to get like a really good deal if you can. Uh, if you can get it renewed or refurbished, they have them for like 800 bucks on Amazon. Um, but yeah, I would I would definitely buy it uh, right now. Only because even though the S24 Ultra is right around the corner, it's I'm telling you guys, I don't think it's going to be a big upgrade at all from what I'm seeing. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.